So I'm interviewing today. I posted earlier on my Instagram. So I'm interviewing today. I'm having a little break between my next interview. Kind of losing my voice. That's the wonderful thing about having a lot of interviews in one day. You do, you do a lot of talking because you're asking a lot of questions. So for small business owners and entrepreneurs and people who are hiring, one thing that I like to say is believe red flags. When someone shows or demonstrates red, a red flag, multiple red flags, believe it. You know, despite how desperate you may feel like you need somebody or maybe, or maybe this is the one, believe red flags. So today I had some actually pretty good interviews so far. E excellent interviews. I think I've interviewed six people so far. I still have three more to go this afternoon, but six people so far. Out of those six, only one of them was bad for lack of a better word. And let me tell you some things that makes this this person bad or makes this makes this a red flag. So they did a lot of talking, like a lot of talking. You could get nothing in really to even ask questions because they talked so much and they didn't realize, they couldn't self realize that maybe let me just answer the question and, and wait for the next one. They did a ton of talking. When I asked them about their last position, you know, they went on and on and on about why it didn't work out, you know, then how bad the employer did them, which is a red flag because you don't want to say that in an interview. Uh, you should just answer the question. If you no longer work at that place, I no longer work there. You know, because basically it was I no longer work there and then you can state why. It was not a good fit or something. You know, I, I didn't get along with the manager or I want to try something different. Something simple. But for small business owners, again, and entrepreneurs, these are red flags. When you're interviewing somebody, you want to hear why do, why don't they work at that place anymore? What are they telling you? Is it a repeat pattern? Every place they go, is it because that person has a problem or what? So you ask that question. When I interview, so let me go, let me start from the beginning. When I interview, every candidate always go over their resume. Is this your resume? Yes. Because I'm, I'm interviewing via Zoom. So I show their resume on the screen. Is this your resume? Yes. And I ask them to tell me about different positions. Not all of them. Usually the last position. Um, this is, this is. tell me about this place. Why you no longer work there? Why are you leaving there? So I ask that. Then I talk about my company. So I talk about the company, the position, benefits, pay I've already sent out. Benefits usually I already send out too before we even schedule a Zoom interview so they'll know upfront what the pay is, what the benefits are, but I go over it in a little bit more detail and a little bit more about the position. Then I start asking interview questions. So that is every time I look at the resume, I talk about my position, again, go in details of benefits or go in more detail of what the job is, ask them if they have questions about the job, that I about the things that I just went over, then I start asking my interview questions. Boom, boom, boom. The reason why this person was so, was red flags. One, why do you still work at this place? Oh no. And then they listed all the reasons why this place was so bad, etc. Just, it took them 20 minutes. The interview is only 30 minutes. It took them 20 minutes to get through that. So it was rushing, trying to get through some of the interview questions because I didn't even get through all of them before the time was up because I allot 30 minutes for each interview. The other reason too is the person was using inappropriate if, uh, inappropriate language. So things that would offend another person. I'm not easily offended. It did not offend me. But when you're thinking of this person is going to be representing my company and they're already using this type of language in an interview with me and they're supposed to be on their best behavior when they are comfortable and in front of the clients that I represent, they're going to offend somebody with the terminologies and the words that they're using. So that's another red flag. So the things are, can, are, are you able to listen? Because in an interview, it's a, I always say it's a, you talk, I talk, you talk, I talk. 
There's a rhythm. You talk, I talk. You talk, I talk. If I'm doing all the talking, that's a problem. If you're doing all the talking, that's a problem. So this person, it was all of them talking. So how are you? How will you be able to learn something new if all you're doing is talking? These are red flags that are going up for me. So when I'm interviewing, I pay attention to red, those type of red flags. Those are red flags. After the interview, after I interview, ask my interview questions. I always ask them, turn back around. Do you have any questions for me? I always give them a, a time when I plan to make a decision. So for this position, I plan to make a decision by Friday. You will hear from me either way, whether you got the position or you didn't get the position. Because I don't like to have people left in limbo. So I always say, you're going to get an email from me either way. If I'm offering you the position, you'll have an offer letter. You'll get an email from me. If you're not getting the position, you'll get an email from me saying thank you for your time. You can look for as early as, so I interview today. And today is on this video. Today is Tuesday. So I told them they'll hear from me by Friday. So I always say you'll hear from me as early as tomorrow and as late as Friday. So start checking your emails as early as tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. So I always tell people up front when they can expect to hear from me because I don't let like people hanging. And, I, and in the interview, always tell them when the start date. So I'm looking for. So today is January the 9th. So I'm looking for February 1st start date. So that's one of the questions. I'm looking for a February 1st start date. If you're offered the position, would you be able to start February 1st? Those are questions I ask. I ask the same questions for every candidate because I'm trying to make sure that I'm being, um, giving everybody the fair shot, the fair take. So I'm asking the same questions, to writing down what their answers are to make sure that I have notes. So for example, if somebody has more experience at something, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to beat out somebody who has less experience, but can they articulate? Can they, are, are they open to hearing how other things go? Yes, you might have done this same position somewhere else, but at this company, this is how we do this same position, you know, how receptive they are with that. So when you're interviewing, and so, so when you're interviewing, and I always interview the same way. When I, you know, as HR department for other companies and they, and I have that, that person, their supervisor interview with me, it's the same pattern. We talk about their resume, talk about the position, go in more detail, maybe about benefits or what the position is. They already have the pay. They already have that before they even agree to the interview. Then I ask my interview questions. And then if there's um, a supervisor of this department, if they are with me, then they ask their questions. After they ask their questions, I always say to the candidate, do you have any questions for us? They will again say, if they have questions, sometimes they say, no, you were very thorough. I don't have any questions or they may have questions. Then I will say, we plan to make a decision, give the date, when you should be looking out for me, how you will receive the information from me, whether it be email or a phone call, the start date that we're looking at. Every time you want to be consistent, so that way you are not judging people unfairly when you're when you're interviewing. So that's just a little bit something how how I do it here, how I would suggest you do it when you're interviewing. That way you know you're not asking illegal questions because you're asking the same questions every time. So you're not asking illegal questions and you're getting information that you need to get to make a good decision for the position that you're hiring for.